So tell me a little bit about your work as an artist. Um, my work started to change. Um, I'm a painter and a printmaker by, uh, by trade, but I, I started working on textiles many years ago. Um, when I quit my job, I realized I didn't have any money to buy store-bought materials, so I had to reevaluate. I looked around my stuff. I, I thought about textiles, which is my first love, and I looked around them. Um, I found objects that were being discarded. I had tons of... Um, things I collected over the years, and that's where I started to focus on using them as my material. Um, I'm fascinated by why people collect, and why people discard, and why people can't discard. So okay. that's basically what I work uh, fo uh, focus on right now. Okay. Ace? Yes, I'm a Filipino visual and performance artist, and uh, my influence came from the Talan tribe. It's a far, it's sort of uh, in Mindanao, the, the place is, is in Mindanao. I used to be a missionary worker and um, I worked with uh, students and um, they belonged to that tribe. And when I saw that the culture was different, I was um, very surprised and um, I felt at home um, with their spiritual, um, spiritual way of living, their rituals, their celebration. And that's where I adapt and that's where I got my influence. Okay. And you're still based in the Philippines. Yes. And you're in New York. Why don't you tell me how you guys came to meet and collaborate? Um, in 2014, I went back to Manila to, uh, to meet with my galleries regarding the show. And I happened to run into, um, we were in one of the exhibits, uh, an art fair, and I happened to see one of Ace's work. So I asked my galleries who the work belonged to. And he said, Ace, so much happens to be here. So at some point, uh, she came over to the uh, the booth and uh, we got introduced and I was very curious about her work, so fascinated too. And so we started talking. Um, I eventually met another textile artist and so an idea came to mind. That I was supposed to have a solo show back uh, a couple of years later. So I, I thought that to combine a group show uh, about textiles. Um, textiles is not Believe it or not, um, it's, it's still hardly accepted in Manila, although we are. Um, traditionally, we, 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 we uh, grew up with textiles, our tribes weave and, and do all that. But as an art form, um, it's not very accepted. Painting is still the, uh, the uh, medium of choice. Mm -hmm. And so we came up with the idea to do a group show, um, which is very su successful after that, um, that group show. And Eventually, we, we st started to talk some more and we, we found there's a lot of similarities in our process, although different also. Um, what, what we thought was amusing was that people would mistake our works at first glance, thinking her work was mine and mine was her. Um, at, actually, during the exhibit, people were interviewing her about my work, and because she knew my work, she was telling them <laughs> until they found it wasn't hers. So, uh, so that's how we sort of started to look. And being here in New York, we would uh, discuss projects um, over FaceTime, um, different, different time zones, and we started sending out proposals and you know, doing a bunch of shows this year. I'm interested in how, so you primarily, your work is with the making of uh, the work with the threads. Crochet. Crochet. And, um, and I'm interested how uh, also your work involves incorporating found objects and 
how did how did you get to the point where you wanted to incorporate the found objects in your exploration of memory and meaning and attachment to objects? Well, I couldn't buy art materials, so I saw people discarding shoes. That's how the idea first came about. Um, um, I was invited by an NGO down at the Lower East Side to do a recycling workshop, a repurposing workshop. And at that time, um, there was this big storm in Manila that had just happened, Yolanda. In fact, um, we partnered with Topaz Arts. Um, we did a fundraiser that November to collect money for the uh, storm victims. Um, but we wanted to continue, and so when the opportunity came up um, to conduct a workshop, I suggested, I said to the, uh, the, the, uh, the folks at the um, um, FAB uh, NYC, I said, why don't we ask the participants, because they were getting an abundance of um, costumes from the theaters around. We were just discarding them, and they wanted to recycle them. So I said, why don't we ask the uh, participants to bring in pairs of shoes. They could be old, uh, but wearable or new, um, and we do a binding workshop. So we collected about uh, 200 shoes that day. Uh, I was very excited with the outcome, and I continued the, uh, the project. I did um, social media, and people were sending me shoes from North Carolina, from, from California, and all that, and I did workshops. And in the end, I collected about 400. Um, we exhibited them here first. That was the idea, to exhibit them here in New York before I shipped them to Manila. And I did a solo show in Manila, and then we donated them to the, fat, to the uh, Typhoon victims after. So that's sort of how the idea came about. The, the excess that we have here, uh, worse in other countries. Um, you know, I, 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 in Manila, you don't hardly see any trash. I see TVs thrown away here. I collect TVs. My studio is filled with stuff that I collect from the street. Mm -hmm. um, carpets, uh, Persian carpets, whatever. And you know, it's the difference of that. And that's how sort of the idea evolved on the binding mm -hmm. of objects. And uh, A's, I... Uh, Crocheting seems an understatement for uh, the work that you have here um, because it really takes on a lot of different um, forms and shapes. How did you uh, how did you come to have your work be so expansive? Um, for this one, um, I took from Jed's process, wherein he binds the uh, collects um, collects things. Um, for um, for this. Piece, I collected memories of um, my experience here in New York and um, crocheted it. So um, from there, it's a more personal approach uh, and process oriented. But it's, yeah, it's that, it's the memento, it's the reminder. So there's yeah. a similarity with what we do. Um, she likes, but it's for her, it's more of a personal journey. Being but it. the question was, th how did it? Expand, right. Yeah. right? No, how, how your works are big. How your works are big. She yeah. likes okay. big installations. Yeah. In the Philippines, there are not much um, textile art uh, artists using textile, mm -hmm. and um, being in that um, era where in textiles are not accepted mm -hmm. uh, that much, and they see it as craft, I really wanted to make um, an impact. Mm -hmm. Okay. And hoping that I can do it myself and I can make bigger works by myself using hand, wherein um, you don't use machines, and that that sort of makes it different from um, a person doing something and a machine doing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I know that um, for this particular project, you have. Uh, performance aspect to the work yes. and how did that uh, how did that come about how did that emerge from your textile based practice yes usually in um, in the shows that I had have had um, there would usually be musicians playing music or performances and then I realized this is my show so how come I'm not doing anything so I picked up a one tribal instrument, it is a rain stick. And then when I picked it up, I realized that I can make um, make different um, moves. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of came to a realization where, why don't I do or make a crochet rain stick? And then I did it, I made it. And then I, it was more flexible because you, then you can bend it 
-hmm. And then that's the time I realized I can perform with my work. So how come I won't do that? So I did. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that 15 years ago, I was with the Tala and when I was with the Tala and Big Tribe, mm -hmm. they have this um, performances wherein they mimic the avian movements. Okay. And then it's called Binano. And then I realized, why don't I have something uh, like that um, in my performance? And then I made this um, sort of a butterfly wings and then mimicked the, the moves of the butterflies. And from there, it was as if there was something um, spiritual or something that is up there that's guiding me with my performance. And, um, it just happens. Okay. So let's let's take a look right now at the performance that you did here at Topaz Arts.
Hi, we're joined now by Paz Tanwaki, a co-founder with Todd Richmond of Topaz Arts. I wanted to uh, ask you, Aze, about the performance um, in the movement and um, how you experienced that in the context of this textile, um, this textile exhibition. Yes, um, textile is very re relatable. We wear them. Fabric is all around us, and it's very relatable. Now, performance is also the same. We can perform anywhere. Like um, when I first came here in New York. Um, I realized that New Yorkers are very expressive and they can just perform anywhere they want. And I did that um, with my own performance as well. Um, at the same time, in relation to fabric, um, it is also very, um, it has endless possibilities wherein you can use it anywhere you um, want or whatever you want to do with it because it fits um, tactile properties and flexibility. Um, you can wear it, you can perform with it, you can move with it, and it follows. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So Paz, tell me a little bit about Topaz Arts. Topaz Arts is a nonprofit arts organization that was founded in 2000 by Todd Bridgman and myself. Um, it was founded um, as an artist-run space. The two of us are both artists, collaborating artists. And um, we found this space, it was a wrong warehouse space, in Queens that we converted to what you see today. Um, so it's a dance studio for contemporary dancers primarily and a visual arts gallery up here. The visual arts gallery is really our public component to what we do, programming as far as um, inviting the audience in and letting them see what um, artists are creating. And we, we focus on new work, so we like to present artists that are either working on brand new work or working in a new vein, a new method of working. So um, it, it, that's what uh, we've been focusing on. Um, as far as the dance studio, um, we, uh, we provide uh, affordable space for dancers and choreographers to make work. And in that process, we also, um, the, the people who use the dance studio also are inspired by walking through the gallery to get to the dance studios. So there's a lot of dancers and choreographers and artists that um, come through the space and are able to interact with the work and as far as seeing it uh, daily and um, getting influenced and inspired by what they see and what changes throughout the space. So. And may I add to that, and, and then vice versa too, when we were working here as a residency, I was inspired by the music that I hear back there when the choreographers are rehearsing. So as to what Pass was saying, they walk by art, we hear their music and we get to meet them and they tell us about it. It's inspiring for us too. Yeah. And I should mention, we um, invited Jed and A's to be in residence here over the summer, mm -hmm. July and August, um, to create the work. So most of the work was done primarily here. And um, we also like the fact that they are collaborating artists. Um, mm -hmm. It's really intriguing to find two artists that complement each other, but also um, work um, on their own thing, but um, really collaborate as far as promoting each other and also um, making work that um, inspires a new um, vision mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And how has the experience been working here over the summer? Um, it was very nice, actually, and like I said, uh, it was. It, it, it's, it's great to work in an environment like this, um, to have the space, to, to have a wonderful creative space. You have your, your own time and space and you can come in any time. Sometimes I'll come in in the morning or late in the afternoon and work and it's just, you can do that any time. And again, meeting um, um, the choreographers and getting inputs from them too or, or comments and th that exchange. Um, for me, it was very positive. Um, Ace. I have a very small uh, space in the Philippines, so I usually work in front of the TV and in the sala, and it's really just a cube or just a small square. But here I get to use big space wherein I can just dive into my work and then put it uh, on the floor and then really just crochet on the floor and um, without thinking um, about um, the lack of space. And also, I really like the interaction between other artists, choreographers, um, who comes here. And um, like 
they can see us working, but we can't see them back there. <laughs> However, um, when their song plays, it's like I'm imagining their yeah. movements as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, maybe they're dancing to this wave, and probably that's why the the works had those waves as well. It, it's one way that it's did some influence, I'm sure. <laughs> And Paz, how have how has it been having uh, Jed and A's uh, here this summer? Yeah, it's been great. Um, it's um, it's always wonderful to come in and see the space change through time, um, and and it's interesting that it's a time based thing <laughs> um, that we, as choreographers and dancers, we work with time. So that's what you're watching. But in this sense, this is the culmination of their residency. So those two months that they were working, um, you, s you got to see it, or those people who were lucky enough to see it evolve. Um, it was really special. And so it was wonderful to work together. Great, great. And um, what, um, is there anything that has been inspired uh, that, that you're thinking of next from your work here this summer in Queens? Well, I think um, we, this is our fifth collaborative show this year. Um, I think we're going to take a little breather for the next month. Um, we have a bunch of shows lined up next year in Manila. Um, so I think, especially for Ace, who's here until December, I think she's right now immersing and just enjoying Nerd City. Um, we do have a bunch of open Saturdays here, um, which we'll be posting on the, the website. There will be some workshops. Um, a closing party where there'll be some bands performing also. So there'll be a couple of interesting things going on here um, through October 28th, which is the closing date. Um, but as for our projects, I think this might be it for the year. I think this is it for the year, I'm sure. So, so it's great to, oh, and I want to add that when we launched our um, Jet Days project last year, um, I have an art space in Sunnyside and that's where we launched our, our so it, it's, it's, I thought it was fitting to end the uh, come back to Woodside, Queens, and end our project for the year right here home in, uh, in, in Queens. So it was a great uh, experience for both of us and for her. Too. But it's not the end yet. We have more coming up next year. We don't want to end that yet. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, the official launch and then to come back and, and have a nice big show here in, in Topaz was sort of fun. Okay. And you, you mentioned that, uh, so the, uh, the exhibit goes until the end of October, correct? October. And you mentioned some workshops taking place uh, on the Saturdays. Can you yes. talk a little bit more about what that's going to be? Um, every Saturday we're open from 1 to 5. Um, and at different Saturdays, um, we'll post it on the website. Um, there's a demonstration by A's as far as um, using crochet. Um, it's really interesting. The different types of crochet. What do you call it? Yes. And <laughs> um, she uses. Um, she'll show people how this is done <laughs> as she's doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and Jed will. And and we'll probably combine it also with like a, an artist talk. And people and there's always people interested with, with the process and we'd love to you know to, to talk about that. We'll do some binding workshops. Maybe we're still thought figuring that out. But mm -hmm. yes, there'll be a couple of workshops. We, um, we have several shows throughout the year. Um, we've been focusing for uh, October to be uh, to feature Philippine artists. Um, October is Philippine American History Month, so we like to honor that. Um, it's different every year, um, but um, this year worked out that um, Jedine is um, here for this show. That's cool. That's great. Anything coming up after that uh, towards the end of the year? Yes. Mm -hmm. Our uh, next show will uh, open two weeks after November 11th okay. with a German artist. So we feature very different artists, um, different works. Um, uh, Catherine Burmeister, she's um, based in California, but um, her work is also performance, performative performance art, mm -hmm. video, and um, visual. So. Um, we also like to focus on different artists that um, work with performance um, w within their artwork. I know you have performances here throughout the year. Yes. Okay, great. Anything else that uh, either of you or any of you would like to add before we close? No, just thank you, Todd and, and Pass, really for the uh, this wonderful opportunity. It's really exciting, and uh, again, we're just grateful to be able to, to share works here. Thank you for this rare opportunity. It's really hard to um, penetrate 
uh, in New York, but um, having this chance to show our works here at Topaz Arts is really, and working with you and um, Todd, it's really something um, beautiful and wonderful. Um, and also um, hoping that the, that the thin line between craft and art um, for textiles, um, hoping to elevate that um, thinking and more acceptance probably for the, for the medium. Well, there's a big movement towards that and um, there's many artists uh, working in that vein and um, I think you guys are in that, um, in the forefront of that and um, as far as working together it's been as artists ourselves, we like to work artist to artist, which is, I think, different in different spaces, um, but it becomes different um, when you're all working together as artists, because we can understand each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, before we close, is there a way that people can find more information about each of your artwork in Topaz Arts? Um, yes, we, we're on social media, um, and I have a website, which is www.jedmerino.com. Um, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram also. Uh, but basically, my website is just jedmerino with a G. That's all. Great. And you can see me at www.aceong.com. You can find all the information about this show and also about Topaz Arts at www.topazarts.org.org. And um, we're also on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. So just please follow us and um, hope you can come check out the show. Well, thank you all so much for taking the time out uh, to uh, be on World of Arts by Empire Productions and uh, come out to see the exhibit at Topaz Arts if you can. Great. I'm Brian E. Glover and thank you for joining us for Empire Productions World of Arts. Oh, oh, oh.